I really thank you to having me here, like a dreaming uh, stage for all, all, for all of my heart. Okay, let me start. Human capital theory argues that students from higher socioeconomic status are worthier to invest because their outputs are better than the others. Frankly, it's nonsense. I would like to counter to this argument with the original meaning of education, which is draw out the potential from the students. My name is Jisung, but you can call me Jason, and I'm a little bit different from your uh, experience because I graduate vocational high school, and not like an uh, ordinary graduate school student, uh, I have some uh, special experiences when I was a high school student. So I would like to tell you about how one graduate from vocational school can be a valuable member of the society. This is the school when I graduate. And not only I graduate from the vocational high school, I love and have many experiences and learning about bow making, how I happily look uh, like with my handmade bow. So, but let's stay on the target and talk more about my vocational school life. So, in Korea here, usually vocational schools are as seen as less prestigious than the general education. Maybe the parents from higher socioeconomic status want their children go to the college, not to the workshop. Even their children don't want to study anymore, or they have no idea what they have to do. It makes them problems. The first problem is all of, our, all of the jobs in our society are essential. Not only the doctors or lawyers, but also the delivery drivers and others. Second, AIs and robots are replacing tons of our jobs. And we don't have to talk about anymore because number of studies already emphasize its importance. And imagine uh, your future boss can be a Terminator or someone. <laughs> and he'll say it, the lights, the red lights turns on in his eyes, and I told you that you will be finished the project until Friday, and what you are doing now in KDI school. Something like this. And I'll be back on Monday. <laughs> Something like this. <laughs> and third, stereotype against the vocational education creates uh, tons of discrimination uh, between the general education and the vocational education, which is both important to our society. The world and our society changing very rap rapidly. So if the students who paint his future, fruitful f future only on their uh, high um, SAT score, he or she will eventually face the cold reality. In fact, I got a 20 out of 100 in my math at SAT, Korean Sunung. You, maybe you're not familiar with this eight, number eight, how great is number eight they, they are. It, and you can see the beautiful curve I drawn here, and I, I learned in KDI school here. So, by the way, and yeah, I'm still here and living with my life. And, but please don't ask about my microeconomic scores. <laughs> you know, uh, Macroeconomics, you don't have to mention it because it's worse. <laughs> but social inequality, uh, taught by John Kim, Professor John Kim, yay! <laughs> yeah, I learned a lot, and he, she, she is a really John professor to me, <laughs> and she made me, yeah, uh, study a lot. Okay, uh, let's back to go back to the past when I was. Uh, high school students, I went to the archery range instead of other students starting their yaja, which is the Korean nighttime session, study session, which will end at 
10 p.m., even 11 p.m. It was so nonsense to me. So I went to the archery range and just having a fun with my hobby, and especially rest, but they don't. And let me talk, tell you about more about my story. I was not that diligent student at all, like you all. So I slept every math class. And one day, I slept whole day of school day, like a full day. My career teacher called me and kicked my ass. <laughs> and she said, you're doing nothing for your future. I was so inspired in your career speech that you will be a bow maker because you love bow making. And what you are doing now, she said. At that moment, my whole life was changed because the expectation was I received from my teacher. I'm telling you this story uh, to explain how the expectation that can other can do better can may bring a change. After that event, I searched and analyzed two, almost 200 of admission documents of whole uh, colleges in Korea, including very prestigious colleges. After that, I made my own strategy for my college admission. Like a miracle, I studied pedagogy, and I came here to KDI school to study vocational education policy, and guess what? I graduate last June. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, this is time to talk about my hobby. And if you don't mind, uh, may I take my jacket off? Thank you. Uh, instead of my jacket, I would like to take on my, guess what, apron while I'm using when I'm making bows and arrows and furniture, fixing something. And I feel so good where I, when I'm taking on this. All right, this is my hobby. I always, with this internet community named Bow Making Workshop, let's call it BMW today, but not the car. Okay. <laughs> BMW is a kind of a large community with 30,000 of uh, members, especially focused on teenagers. The teenagers in BMW are struggling to make bows and arrows. They're searching their material by, by, their, by themselves in the forest and the mountain. Nobody cares about them. Nobody teach how to make it. They just communicate in this community. And sometimes they encounter, they have to endure the sneering and laughter. But they still carry on, just like I did. And they found themselves by the bow making. They found their own interest, like engineering or archaeology, wood science, and education policy, just like I did. This is the, one of the bow I made, like 15 years old, something. And yeah, they really enjoy this kind of activities. And even one of my really best friends, who, uh, who is the member of the BMW while I was the manager of BMW myself, he gave a TED talk in Long Beach, California with his bow making stories. And now he's running his own startup with his four employees. And I found the true value of education in these activities, bow making. But sometimes, if someone carrying on their journey, they sometimes encounter the rough moments. For me, it was to entering the hardware store. The hardware stores are for men, like big adults, like ajashi. <laughs> so, 
when I was when I first entered to the hardware store, I was 15, like this kind of 15. So I was so overwhelming, and the Ajushi in the hardware store was very tough guy. So what are you going to what, what up, what's up here? No? Something like this. But uh, once I entered to the hardware store, I could continue my journey of bow making with the. Uh, This kind of brand new woodworking tools, and let me introduce my uh, prestigious box in here. Actually, it was a box for orange, but it's already seven years old, and I can do anything with this. So yeah, and also uh, how see my, how am I eco-friendly? Not only the bow makers, but also the dancers and rappers, or even Have no education or employee nor training, they have a full potential and they are fully worthy. While they keep carrying on their own journey, even if they have no direction until now, minorities, like students from vocational schools, students from rural areas, or out-of-school adolescents. They already have the potential to change the world and to make the world a better place. To conclude this uh, talk, I want you to dare, and I'd like to dare. Let us be the starting point where the world become different. Thank you for listening.